Hi, I'm Evan. I study natural resources at Cornell University, and I'm going to tell you about the world's most ingenious, most clever predators, carnivorous plants. If you'd like to know how plants that look like these are able to eat things that look like these, then keep watching. Imagine you're a plant. Instead of eating with your mouth, you eat with your roots. And instead of eating food, you turn soil nutrients into energy using the sun. Now imagine that you're a plant in a wetland. The wet, mushy soil around your roots doesn't have enough nutrients for you to survive because they're carried away by the water. They realized that all over their leaves, little packets of energy with legs and wings were crawling. We call those packets insects. All the plants had to do was figure out a way to get those nutrients into their bodies. Plants that successfully did this became some of the world's most incredible organisms, carnivorous plants. So of all organisms, how did plants figure out how to eat insects? Each group of carnivorous plants has evolved incredible strategies for doing so. Let's imagine we're carnivorous plants. There's lots of insects crawling and flying around us, but how do we get them to come to us so that we can eat them? Think about fishing. Fish don't want to bite a sharp hook, but they do. Because fishers use this, a lure. A lure tempts you to do something, just like how this lure tempts fish to eat it because it looks like a tasty bug. Carnivorous plants also use lures. One type of lure is color. Many insects happen to be attracted to the color red, because lots of flowers are colored red, and flowers have nectar that insects can drink. For this reason, lots of carnivorous plants are colored red where their traps are, such as the jaws of a Venus flytrap, the tentacles of a sundew, and the mouths of some pitcher plants. Some carnivorous plants actually produce nectar. Venus flytraps secrete nectar on the rim of their traps with glands. Glands, by the way, are special cells that make something, like liquid, similar to how tear glands in our eyes make tears. Pitcher plants also have glands that secrete a trail of nectar leading up to the trap. And finally, some carnivorous plants make fake nectar. The leaves of sundew and butterworts are glistening in what looks like delicious nectar, but in reality is a sticky glue. This brings us to the next step of how carnivorous plants eat. Once an insect has come to check out the plant, how do we get it to stay long enough to eat it? Carnivorous plants need to use traps. This is where carnivorous plants become really cool. Carnivorous plants have evolved lots of ingenious adaptations to trap their prey. One method is sticky leaves. When an insect lands on these leaves, its legs instantly become tangled in a gooey mess. As the insect struggles to break free, it only gets more legs and wings caught. But wait, it gets better. Sundew can move their tentacles. That's right, these plants can move. Shortly after catching an insect, a sundew will begin to move its tentacles to cover an insect. Some species can even move their entire leaves, wrapping them around their prey. Sundews aren't the only type of carnivorous plants that can move. Venus flytraps are famous for doing so. If you look closely at a Venus flytrap, you'll notice there are little hairs on the edge of the trap. As an insect is happily going along, it's likely to bump these hairs. The first time it does so, nothing happens. The second time, bam! This trap slams shut, trapping the insect inside. Finally, we have the American pitcher plants. These carnivorous plants don't even need to move to trap their prey, yet they probably catch more than any other type of carnivorous plants. Just by looking at these beautiful plants, you can probably guess where the insects go. But it's not as simple as you might think. Pitcher plants have three tricks up their sleeves. First, the nectar they make contains a chemical that makes the insects drowsy and clumsy when they drink it. Second, most pitcher plants grow stiff hairs on their lids pointing downwards, these hairs make the surface very difficult for insects to walk on. And third, the inside of these pitchers are coated in a smooth, waxy substance that makes it very slippery. So, what happens when we have a clumsy insect walking on these difficult surfaces? It falls in. We've now seen how four types of carnivorous plants lure and trap their prey. The last step is digestion. When we say digestion, we mean that the plants break down the insect's body and absorbs the nutrients. When we eat, we use our teeth to mash up food, enzymes in our saliva to start breaking the food down, and acids in our stomach to do the rest.
Carnivorous plants don't have teeth, saliva, and stomachs, but they do make acids and enzymes. After a plant has caught an insect, it begins to secrete a mixture of acids and enzymes from its leaves to start breaking the insect down. Butterworts and sundews will start to do this right after they've caught their insect. The tentacles that move over an insect instantly start secreting this juice. Some butterworts will even tilt their leaves to make a pool of digestive juices. When soaked in this pool, insects begin to break down and dissolve. The plants then reabsorb the nutrients back into their leaves. After a Venus flytrap has sealed around its prey, it starts to pump in a mixture of digestive juices. Here, I have an old pitcher plant leaf. If I cut this open, what do you think we're going to find? At first, we have a smooth, waxy surface inside the pitcher. This is the slide that the insect falls down. Further down, there are small, stiff hairs pointing towards the bottom. These hairs stop the insect from climbing back out. And here at the bottom, you can see the insects that this leaf has caught. After an insect falls into a pitcher plant, there are two main ways it dies. In most pitcher plants, the insect simply can't crawl out and it starves. In others, the pitcher plants have a pool of water that the insect drowns in. Either way, the insect bodies are then broken down by acids, enzymes, and sometimes bacteria, and the nutrients are reabsorbed into the leaves. Over time, some pitcher plants collect so many insects that their leaves become so heavy that they topple over. We've now seen how carnivorous plants lure their prey with color and nectar, how they trap their prey with sticky leaves, moving traps, and pitchers, and we've seen how they digest them with acids and enzymes. Now that you know so much about carnivorous plants, you can go out and see them in the wild. But wait, don't plants as cool as these only live in steamy, faraway jungles? No, they actually grow here in the United States. Did you know that Venus flytraps are found in North and South Carolina and nowhere else in the world? Or that there's a species of pitcher plant and sundew that live in Canada and Northern United States. Butterworts also live in Canada and the Southeastern United States. So where would you go to find them? If you live in the Northern part of the continent, you should look in peat bogs. These are open wetlands covered in thick spongy mosses and grasses. If you live in the southern half of the continent, you're better off looking in wet, open pine savannas. Just remember that you should never, ever take a carnivorous plant from the wild. Sadly, carnivorous plants are quickly disappearing as people poach them and destroy their habitat. Not many people care about the wetlands that carnivorous plants grow in. To create buildings and dams, people are draining and flooding the wetlands that carnivorous plants need to survive. They need their wetlands to stay exactly the way they are. So go ahead, look up where carnivorous plants grow in your state, and go out and find them in the wild. It may take a while to find them, but I guarantee that you will not be disappointed.